Hello and welcome to the Jigme Kelting Podcast. My name is Jigme Kelting. Each week you'll hear fascinating conversation as well as stories from many professionals from a broad range of fields and experiences they've had. On today's episode, I'm joined by Italian chef, season four champion, or master chef, and cookbook author and private chef service owner, Luca Monfe. Luca, welcome to the show. Buongiorno. Thank you. Thank you. How are you? I'm I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I, I keep I keep listening to your interviews and it's so interesting. You know, like I've always said, what does chow mean? You know, like what what does it actually mean? Chow is the Italian that we use it for hi, hello, how and also we use it for bye bye too. Chow chow when you leave, chow when you see somebody. Chow chow. Yeah, um, okay, so let me talk about first your um your birthplace. Um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. It's Aviano Pordenone, Italy. Well, actually, I was born in Sydney, Australia. Wow. My parents were Italian immigrants. They moved to Australia when I, in the 70s. I was born in 81, uh, but I lived in Sydney only until I was three years old. My parents then moved back to Italy. Um so that's why I have an Italian accent and not an Aussie accent. But um, Aviano that you mentioned is the place where my family and I lived uh, probably for around 15 years before I decided to move to the States. Yeah. Um, can you talk about more about uh, what the culture is like in Aviano and um, and also like talk a little bit about Australia and that experience? Well, Australia, I can't talk much because I got I, I lived there until I was three, so I don't re, I don't remember much. Italy, we live in this in a small uh, area, the countryside near the mountains. It's very beautiful. You have an hour from the beach and an hour and a half from the Alps. Uh, very diversity of food because you are near the sea but then you go up to the very very high mountains also different in weather lots of delicious wines great food great people yeah absolutely and you know i think obviously like being italian you've got you've got to have a love for sports right um yeah we do soccer soccer was like our bread we would play soccer before going to school then soccer after school then go to soccer practice and then the games and then watch soccer on tv yeah i mean now that italy is obviously on, italy unfortunately is not at the world cup this year but um who are you cheering for in this world cup um, well, my wife is america my kids were born here so we're going to root for the American team. Okay, okay, that's that's good, that's good. Because uh, you don't know this, but I was actually born in uh, Manhattan, uh, New York. So, I mean, I you're from you're from New York right now, currently. I live in Pennsylvania. I used to live. I lived in New York for ten years. Ah, Pennsylvania. What is yeah. what is what is Pennsylvania like? It's beautiful. We're near the mountains. There's ski resorts, there's lakes, there's rivers, lots of hiking. Now we had uh, one of the most amazing, you know, change in the leaves. So for a month or so, there's this beautiful uh, scenario. Every time, everywhere you drive, everywhere you go, you have these beautiful trees that are changing the leaves. I mean, it gets a little bit cold in winter, snows a little bit, but... I think the seasons are, are very special. Hi. Okay, so we're back now. Okay, perfect. I don't know what happened. I mean, I do um, know what happened. But last week, but it still doesn't work. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll continue where we left off. Um, so you were talking about Pennsylvania. Um, yeah. Now, Pennsylvania is a beautiful state. Uh, we moved back here because my wife is from here. So now we live close to my mother-in-law and my sister-in-law with their family. But also I like it because it's just an hour and a half from New York. So we get to go to New York for a day. The kids love it. And you know, I have a lot of memories in New York. So I like, I like to go back. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and you're talking about family, and so can you talk about like when your uh, your upbringing in terms of uh, cooking and um, uh, how that really began? Well, I mean, we live in a family where we always had a lot of good food. My grandmothers, both of them, they were great cooks. My mother is an amazing cook. Also in Italy, generally, you know, the the culinary tradition is very, is very, is very good. So anywhere you go, more or less in Italy, um, you can have some good food. So, but I don't have the story that I start cooking when I was like six years old, eight years old. No, I used to eat a lot of good food all the time. Uh, but I didn't start cooking really until I started living by myself here in the States. And still at the beginning, I sucked a lot. Um, it was just, you know, I also worked in the restaurant industry. I mean, I was a server for a long time, and then I became a manager. And working in New York, I worked in very good restaurants, so I got to experience fine dining and very good food, different preparations, different chefs or different techniques. And so learning about that food got me into cooking more. But, you know, when you go to MasterChef, you're still an amateur cook. So it's like everybody likes to call themselves a chef after MasterChef, but nobody's a chef. Nobody ever worked in a restaurant one single day. Nobody ever, you know. They wouldn't, they wouldn't know how to run a kitchen. They wouldn't even know how to, to run. I mean, they, I put myself too, after MasterChef, even if I won, I went and go and work in a restaurant. I was going to be a prep guy or a salad guy, you know, because we have no experience. So it's, uh, it's the magic world of television where everybody stays in on TV for a few episodes and then they become chefs. It, real life is a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you're talking about your restaurant experience. Can you talk to me? Talk to me more about uh, how those types of experiences helped you become uh, the chef that you are today. Well, you know, when I started cooking a little bit more seriously after the show in creating menus and creating new dishes. Obviously, what I've experienced in the past, it it helped me, uh, you know, get things together a little bit faster. Because I experienced French cuisine, Italian cuisine, Japanese cuisine. So in creating new dishes, I always probably get a little bit of inspiration from dishes that I used to serve that I liked a lot but then obviously you know I go a little bit on my own my own and make it more personal Mm -hmm. um and so can you talk to me more about um your relationship with Gordon Ramsay what in the show uh well it could be in the show or outside the show in the show I have no relationship well I mean we were we were we were not friends before the show. I mean, I think he likes me and we respect each other, but I'm not the type of guy that I'm gonna go and bother him all the time just because I saw him on the show for a few months. In the show, it, it was uh is a great guy. I, I love I love Chef Francie. Um very energetic, very funny. Uh very charismatic. I mean, I I believe that most of the success of his shows are because of him. I believe you could have put any anybody else in in any other sh- in the show that he does. I don't believe they would have been as as successful. I mean, he has the personality, the charisma, and also. He knows how to do television very good. But beside that, with us, it was always very nice. For the this, this small amount of time that we spent together when the cameras were off, it was always uh, cheerful and happy. And uh, it's a great man. I love him. 
I always say Chef Ramsey is not the guy you see in Hell's Kitchen. Maybe he used to be when he was in the kitchen full time and trying to maintain his his uh, mission stars and stuff. But nowadays, Chef Ramsey is more of the guy that we see in uh, MasterChef Junior. Yeah. He's a father, he's a great father, he's a sweet guy. I mean, obviously, when he gets mad, he gets mad, but we all do. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Um, and so let's talk about your, your cookbook, My Italian Kitchen. Um, yes. What what do you feel uh, most proud of when you think about your cookbook? That I have a cookbook. <laughs> it's not something that everybody has. Um, but I, also the cookbook was done right after MasterChef. Um, I think I may be working on a new one next year. Uh, just because my cooking style changed so much since since I made the, sh the cookbook after the show. Um, so again, I wasn't a chef. I still don't like to talk to myself as a chef, but obviously I have a lot of more experience now than after the show. So, And I do have a successful business where I cook to people, so I guess... It's okay to, to call me a chef. Um, but the cookbook after the show, I was told to put together 80 recipes in 10 weeks max, something I've never done before. And uh, I mean, thank God I had an editor that helped me with the writing the book and uh, changing, fixing the recipes and stuff. But uh, I'm proud that I have a cookbook because not, not a lot of people can say that. Um, but honestly, that, that food is now dated. It's old. And some recipes I don't really even like anymore. As I think it's normal, you know, people change in 10, ten years is a lot of time. There's an evolution as a person and as a as a professional. So uh, look forward eventually to make a new one. Not just like making cookbooks, um, not, not, not many people make money on cookbooks. Like if you have Chef Ramsey and Lydia Bastianich or Giada or Bobby Flay, those names still make, can make money on cookbook. Uh, small people like me is not, you don't make a cookbook to make money. You make a cookbook to have something to present to to your followers or to your people or to or to have a, you come across. You know, it could be uh, from uh, social media or real life. But it's very it's a very hard business nowadays, especially because you have everything online. People you do tablets and stuff like that. But again, cookbook is cool. I hope I make a new one. Mm -hmm. um, and so let's talk about your overall cooking philosophy. What is it with um, what is the philosophy behind your cooking style? I try to use uh, fresh ingredients and seasonal ingredients. I think uh, when you buy a good product, that makes your life much, much easier. My cuisine, you know. And again, after MasterChef, I was all about like, Fancy shit and phones and garnish and 20 different components in every dish. And um, then I, I kind of went back to my origins and tried to make more, um, more food that represents me the most. I mean, in the catering right now, we mm -hmm. do offer a few type of menus, but the most popular is... It's family style and is what people uh, connects more with Italian cuisine. We do we do a few dinners a month with the fine dining dinner and these five courses and very elegant. But the one that goes the most is when we serve homemade pasta with oxtail or uh, meatballs and. Um, steak night and braised beef with truffle mashed potatoes things that people are more uh, familiar with 
And uh, as I said, the family style is the one that goes the most. I think people people like the concept of, you know, sitting around the table with people that they like and eating good food. Uh, doesn't have to be always super, super fine dining and um, take white tablecloth and the server that comes at the table every two seconds. Mm-hmm. Um, and so as we're talking about your cooking philosophy, what do you think your signature dishes are? Well, the braised beef short ribs that I made in the MasterChef finale, that's the only dish that never changed. Actually, I made it much simpler. I took out a little bit of things, but the braised beef is what um, people order the most for the catering. And many people don't even know about the finale. People now... See, I don't get tired only because of people from MasterChef. Actually, the the fan base that they used to hire me, um, it was big at the beginning, a few years after the show. Nowadays, we get hired because we have great reviews online and people, most of the people that sometimes, they, they nowadays hire me, they don't even know about MasterChef. They just find out because when they see the website, then they, they do a little bit more, to, more of research. Um, risottos, obviously. A risotto, that's very seasonal, but, but nowadays, the one that goes the most for fall is uh, butternut squash and... Uh, and lamb sausage. Um, pasta, the pappardelle with oxtail. That's one of my most favorite. And the olive oil cake. The olive oil cake has been on the menus for, I think, four or five years now. And that changes too. We do it with strawberries in summer. We do it with figs um, when it's season. Then we do it with poached pears, port wine. Meringue, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and now, as we're going to wrap up this interview, let's talk about your private chef catering service dinner with Luca. Um, why did you feel that there was a need to create uh, a private chef catering service? Well, actually, somebody asked me to do it. <laughs> they asked me to do it. It was a, the show was just a airing. It wasn't even over. Uh, and a family was coming to New York in vacation. And this the, the father sent me an email and said, um, my kids love you on the show. We're coming to New York in vacation. We would like to surprise them. Can you cook for us? And I said, well, as long as you rent an apartment that has a kitchen, yes, we can do it. And then we did it. It was like in, in June, I think. So the show just aired maybe three or four episodes. Um and then I did that, and then I thought about it, and I created the website, and I created the idea, and it just I launched it the day, the night of the finale. The first few months were crazy. I was I was booked, uh, I think, five or six nights a week. Um, and the crazy part is that I believe that back then my food sucked. I believe that I was very unprofessional. Uh, the kitchen was always a disaster. I had no organization. I was always late. Uh, but back then, people hired me just because I was the winner of MasterChef. So I don't really know how they felt after I left the event. But I got to say that I had a few repeating customers from those years. So maybe sometimes I'm a little bit too uh, critic, critical with myself. But, uh, I mean, the business went on its own, basically. I offered it. It was online. People kept um, requesting over the years. Now it's been, you know, nine years now. And I got to say that 2021 and 2022, 22, um, were the best years so far for the business. Um, so it's been growing still now. I, but as I said, now it's not it's not about mastership. Now it's about people finding a local personal chef that can go in their house and 
and cook very good meal. Uh, we have amazing reviews. So people feed off of that and keep on coming back. We have a lot of, uh, you know, um, repeated customers. There's a lot of word of mouth. And, and you know, there's not many out there, depending on, on the area where you live. But we also live in a very touristy area. People come here from... from Philadelphia and Pittsburgh and New Jersey and New York State uh, because we have lakes and because we have you know, winter people can come skiing, lakes, rivers and hiking and lots of wineries too during summer. So I feel, you know, you need to also be in the, in the, in the, yeah. right, in the right market. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so, uh, you were talking about customers, uh, and I wanted to know this. What is the, I mean, how do you maintain quality and consistency plus customer satisfaction? I mean, that's a, that's a simple question. You know, I mean, if, you, if you're good at what you do and, and, and you, and you, and you, you, you use good ingredients, Ingredients and you have a good team, the customer satisfaction is just a consequence. You know. Also, we do for us is it's very simple because we do small dinners, like we do 10, 15, 20 at the max, and we charge a lot of money. So we we can buy very good ingredients. It's not really like a restaurant where they have a lot of labor and expenses and they need to pay attention how, how much money they spend on the food cost. We, we, because of the amount of money that the, the people pay for it, we can buy premium ingredients and still make uh, a good profit. So I think, you know, it's easier to cook for 12 or 10 people Instead of cooking for two hundred for a, from a restaurant every year, every day, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And so, uh, as my last question is, um, who is a famous chef or friend that you can call for advice, uh, or to just to check in? I mean, I have a lot of friends that are uh, chefs. I think the other day I called, uh, I, I texted Chef Sylvia that, but I don't know if she considered herself famous. She was in, on Top Chef, but I don't call her because she's famous. I call her because she's a friend and she's a very good chef. So I worked in the business for a long time as a, as a server, as I said before. So I have a few friends that are chefs. Uh, but at the end of the day, nowadays, you know, Everyone has the tools out there to, to figure it out. Also, I worked with a great chef for a long time. His name is Chef Michael Vernon. And I do text him once in a while to ask him for, for advice on how to cook certain things. And he used to be a chef when I worked as a server. Um, so, yeah, but, you know, I feel, you know, nowadays with the internet and YouTube and stuff, people yeah. can go. Well, you know. Yeah. I, 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 the, I best way, the best way to learn is also practice. If you want to try to do something, you know, uh, yeah. Well, we've reached the end of the interview, but Luca, my friend, I had such a delightful time today and I thoroughly enjoyed our conversation. Congratulations on the success that you're having and I look forward to staying in touch and chatting with you soon. To the listeners who made it this far into the episode, thanks so much for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Italian chef, season four champion on MasterChef and cookbook author Luca Manfei. You can connect with Luca through her socials on Instagram at Luca Manfei on Facebook, Luca Manfei. Twitter at Luca Monfe and his YouTube channel also Luca Monfe. For more inf info, visit dinnerwithluca.com. 
If you'd like to help spread the word about my podcast, please do feel free to share it with others, post about it on social media. Any form of support is greatly appreciated. Lastly, you can find my show on all podcast streaming platforms just by typing in the Jigme Keltsang show. I've been your host, Jigme Keltsang. Thanks for tuning into this episode. Thank you.